Today, we want to look into things that angels desire to look into. That would be a salvation. A salvation is what I like to call so great a salvation that the Lord has provided for us. So let's start with 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 9-12. through 12. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that will come to you, searching that or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that, not to themselves, but to us they were ministering the things which now have the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. And about those prophets that we just spoke of, this is what Hebrews has to say in 1113. Uh, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but have seen them afar off and were assured of them, embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth, on the earth. So let's go, let's go back to, uh, to first Peter and let's dig into this a little bit. Notice, first of all, we're talking about the salvation of our souls. And it says, of this salvation, angels desire to look into. So let's look a little closer at this. This salvation, looking at the salvation, says the prophets of old, they searched carefully they and prophesied of the grace, look at that, the grace that will come to you. Now that to you is of those who are alive at the resurrection and on. Those, those who are here after the resurrection of Christ, searching what and what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them, notice the Spirit of Christ is in these prophets of old, in the Old Testament, and indicating when he testified beforehand of the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. It says, to them it was revealed, this is, this is what God showed him, these proph prophecies aren't about you. It's not to themselves, but to us. Again, those alive after the resurrection of Christ. They were ministering the things which now have been reported to those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit. In other words, those who are preaching the gospel after the resurrection of Christ is what these prophets were prophesying about. So they were prophesying about stuff that they didn't really didn't understand. And they inquired. They wanted to know. They were looking at. They were asking the Lord, let us know what you are talking about. This suffering Messiah and these glories that are going to follow. What is that all about? They didn't understand. And God let them know that this wasn't for them, but it was for us. They were ministering things now which have been preached to us, the gospel by the Spirit, which is sent from heaven. So that's the first thing we notice is that these angels are looking into something that the prophets themselves in the Old Testament were looking into, but they didn't understand. And the angels are desiring to look into to see if they can understand. Now, salvation, let's talk about this salvation that First Peter mentioned. It's peculiar to humans. Holy angels are intrigued by it. Uh, salvation is not offered to the fallen angels. And prophets of old, as I mentioned, prophesied without really understanding what they were prophesying. So let's talk about the salvation. Everything, we're going to go to Ephesians. Now everything about the salvation has an ultimate aim, an ultimate goal. And you'll find that in the first chapter of Ephesians. Three times it's mentioned to the praise of his glory or to the praise of his glorious grace is the first one. The other two are to the praise of his glory. Notice that in verse 6, verse 12, and verse 14. 
So the over overarching aim of our salvation is to be to the praise of God's glory. Now Ephesians 1 shows the harmony and the unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Godhead, in the work of our salvation. Uh, verses uh, 4 through 6 show the work of the Father in our salvation, which ultimately is to the praise of His glory. It shows that He has made us accepted in, in the Beloved. That Beloved, who is that? That is Jesus. Before Jesus, we were not accepted by God at all, period. There was no acceptance there. It took Jesus to come, pay the penalty to become sin for us, then enables us to be the righteousness of him for God to be able to accept us. So, and then verses uh, 7 through 12 show the work of the Son. And I'm just going to uh, show here, uh, it says, It was in Christ that we who first trusted in Christ that we should be to the praise of his glory. Again, this is going to be the Father's glory, as it's noted here, to the praise of the glory of His grace. And then, of course, in 13 and 14 uh, of the Holy Spirit, it says that those of us who have believed, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which again is going to be to the praise of His glory, to the glory of God. So in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6, uh, 1 through 6, it says, For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which, when you read, you may understand my knowledge of the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles, here's the mystery, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. So in Ephesians 3, 1 through 6, what Paul's doing is declaring his apostle. He's making a declaration of his apostleship for the Gentiles. He's showing that it was a dis dispensation of grace that God gave him in verse 2 to be this apostle and to be able to show this mystery. And notice in verse 4, he says, by which when you read, he's talking about this letter. When you read, you may understand my knowledge of the mystery of Christ. So this whole aim here is, is that you would understand what he, what Paul understands. That's what he's trying to get. And you'll remember in chapter 1, he prayed that we would know, that we would understand, that we would be filled with revelation of the knowledge of God. That's why he prayed. In chapter 1, and now he's trying to extract that out, what he wants us to understand, what he prayed for us to understand. And he's asking that God show us, show us this. So now we're going to get to uh, verses 8 through 11. It says, To me, who am Less than the least of all saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what the fellowship of the mystery is, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. And look, all of this is to the intent, to the intent. That the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by or through the church. Other translations have through to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. And this all is according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
this is an eternal purpose that God had, is that the, the intent of his manifold wisdom would be displayed to the principalities and powers. So who are these principalities and powers? I think we all know the answer to that. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, We re do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts host of wickedness in heavenly places. That's what pr principalities, manifold wisdom of God is going to be displayed to this group of characters. Now notice, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Uh, we do not wrestle against liberals. They're not our fight. We do not wrestle against Democrats. They're not our fight. We do not wrestle against electric, elected officials. They are not our fight. We do not wrestle against Antifa. They are not our fight. We do not wrestle against Black Lives Matter. They are not our fight. We do not wrestle against people, no matter what they're doing. That's, they're not our wrestle. We do not wrestle against governments. They're not our wrestle. Jesus told, I believe it was Pilate, uh, in, a, in a condemnation hall that he was in, he says, my kingdom's not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, my disciples would fight for me. He made it plain and clear. His kingdom's not of this world, and we do not fight and wrestle against people of this world. That's all there is to it. We don't. We're like sheep led to the slaughter. That's the way God ordained it. And that's the way he made it. And that's just the way it is. So, let's go on to the next uh, slide here. So, let's look at to the intent now. The, we're going to look at the intent and purpose here. The intent, to the intent, and according to the eternal purpose. That God's manifold wisdom will be displayed through the church. That it would be us collectively. The manifold wisdom of God. And it, we see that this is a plan that God has had hidden for the ages to display through the church. And I will put forth that this wisdom on display to the principalities and powers uh, is not just to the wicked ones. As we've seen in Peter, angels, holy angels des desire to look into this, into this manifold wisdom of God, this great salvation of God so how is this wisdom displayed that's the question how is the wisdom of God displayed uh, through the church to the principalities and powers well we can look at verse 8 one way is through the preaching of the unsearchable riches of Christ and through the fellowship of the mystery to make all see the fellowship of the mystery. Uh, uh, the, that word fellowship, other ways it's been translated, is plan, through the, to make everybody see what the plan of the ministry, uh, mystery is. Uh, another one is administration, to, to make all see the way God administers. The administration is mystery. Remember, the, the mystery is the Gentiles coming into the body of Christ. That is the mystery. See how it's administered, the purpose and I kind of threw it all together and uh, put it into a blender, all these different ways it's translated. I come up uh, to make known what the mystery is all about to us. Uh, that's been hidden from the beginning of the ages until now. So this is what the angels are desiring. We're back, back to First Peter again. The angels are desiring to look into this mystery. It's got them intrigued. It, it just this great salvation that God has provided for us through Christ. Has the angels intrigued? Now the let's look at some of the riches of Christ that are on display. Going back to Ephesians chapter one, Paul's prayer. He's talking about the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us. That he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand, at his right hand in heavenly places. Obviously, above all rule, authority, 
principalities and powers, every name that's named, all of that. But the power, the immeasurable greatness of his power that's toward us, the same power when he raised Christ, uh, raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. This power is part of the riches of Christ. Christ being seated at the right hand of God in heavenly places. Keep that in mind. Uh, because notice in Ephesians 2, 1 through 6, I want you to think about Christ being in heavenly places. That power it is works towards us that raised Christ from the dead, put Jesus at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. Ephesians 2, 1 through 6 says, we were dead in trespasses and sins. We were following the course of this world. We were following the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit. It goes on to say the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. I would say the influence of the principalities and power, uh, powers of the air is what it's talking about here. And we lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, were by nature children of wrath, just like the rest of mankind, right? Isn't that what it says? But notice, remember that power that works towards us when God raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Father. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love where he loved us, even when we are dead in our trespasses and sin, made us alive together with Christ. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is the crescendo. So that in the coming ages there are going to be some more riches. The immeasurable riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ are going to be displayed. That is the crescendo. That is what the angels are so intrigued about is how... We are saved, even when we are dead in our trespasses and sins. God come in and put light into our lives, according to what is it, First Corinthians or Second Corinthians? I forget which one it is. That the same God who spoke light out of out of darkness spoke light into our hearts, His glory, His gospel, His salvation into our hearts. So that's what that's what the angels are so interested in is this power, this salvation, this us being dead in trespasses and sins that the fallen angels don't have a hope. They don't have a prayer. This salvation is not offered to them, but it's offered to us. Thank God that he's offered it to us, right? Lord, I don't know if I made sense of this or not, but I'm hoping it ministers to somebody. I hope somebody sees your glory, gets a glimpse of your glory, gets a glimpse of your great salvation. And Lord, that it causes us to desire you above all things, causes us to focus our eyes and our hearts on you. I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.